Well, good evening. Um, what uh, I have here is uh, my 8902A. Uh, I've run it through all of its calibration tests and it fails two tests. The first uh, one it fails is uh, the SWR test, which is measuring uh, the standing wave ratio from the, the input uh, over here. And uh, the second test it fails is the tuned RF level. Now the tuned RF level um, is basically uh, where it sets a signal value and then it uh, uh, sits on that signal value and it tries to move back and forwards from the, the, the signal value to work out how far uh, the system will let drift before it identifies that a frequency error has occurred and gives you an error uh, zero 01. Uh, and what I'm getting is I'm actually getting a uh, uh, an error 19, which is uh, signals too low uh, for it. Now, when I first got the unit, uh, there was a, a problem with it uh, in that uh, on the standalone tuned RF, uh, the, the 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 uncalibrated tuned RF, uh, it would read 10 dB low. And basically, when you use uh, uh, the uncalibrated one, you select uh, uh, RF level and it reads the RF power from the actual RF input here. Whereas if you're using the um, uh, the calibrated one, what it does is just down here on this uh, uh, little set of wires here, this goes to a sensor, which is the 11730 cable uh, sensor. Uh, connector that connects into uh, uh, what is effectively an 8400 series power sensor and then that goes into the the system to uh, have the the power uh, anal analyzed well the RF level comes through these two switches in because I've got a very early one it comes through these two switches and if you look down in there you might be able to see uh, the switch and and you know my fingers are all in the way there but you know, you can see this is a coaxial um, four pole single throw switch and there's actually two of them and there's a set of this uh, hard line that connects these two switches together so what uh, uh, was happening was the S1 here was not actually changing uh, there's a little um, uh, as the the solenoids move it pushes a little contact up and that little contact uh, is what effectively breaks uh, the circuits between uh, the items and there's a little push rods um, I'll uh, include a, a picture where you can see that but um, uh, what I had to do was to get in there and bend the uh, the copper out a little bit now once I did that, it solved my 10 dB problem. And it was 10 dB because this little attenuator here, this is AT2, and this is a 10 dB pad which they put in place, uh, put in line to help with uh, SWR and, uh, and impedance mismatches. So uh, that was always staying in, and the logic control thought it was out when it was actually in and, uh, and that sort of thing. So I think I fixed that, but... In the process, I think I must have introduced some SWR problem, and uh, it's unclear to me where the actual issue is. So what I'm going to go do is take this front panel off, and then I'm going to have a look in and see if I can uh, feed a signal through and measure whether or not I'm getting any significant signal uh, uh, degradation on this before it heads out uh, into the back there. But to do that, what I need to do is to take out um, uh, the little amplifier here. So let's go remove this front panel, and then we'll see the amplifier uh, sitting right there. Okay, here you can see the, the signal path a little better. The N-type uh, jack that comes in here, which is where the signal comes in, comes through here and then comes into this switch here. And then switch two is behind here, and this is U1. This is the RF uh, amplifier at the front end. And so when this amplifier is turned on, the switch has changed to feed uh, uh, the RF signal through into this amplifier. 
So what I want to do is to take this amplifier out of circuit and actually remove that so that I can see what um, uh, signal loss I get just feeding into uh, uh, the amplifier. Okay, so here we can see the you get a, an even better view of the uh, of the path that uh, the signal comes in. It gets switched through the pad or it gets sent out over into the other switch. And here you can see where uh, U1 connects onto the two uh, the two switches there. So what uh, I want to do is to feed a signal in here and then measure what I'm getting out uh, when I come into the amplifier. So let's uh, hook that up and uh, then we'll turn the amplifier on and see if we can uh, get it to uh, turn on. And now you can see that I have uh, myself cabled up and I have the, the amp removed. And uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, turn on the amp so we can see what um, uh, voltage is, what signal is coming out of this, uh, this input here. And if you look down the, the bottom here, let me see if I can get that uh, cable out of the way, you'll see there are two uh, little LEDs. Uh, the orange is for the pad, the green is for the amplifier. So if I lift up the front panel and I type in 1.7 and then special, that should turn um, the pad uh, the amplifier on and we can see that it's turned the amplifier on. And so now I can have a look at my oscilloscope and see what the, uh, the signal is that's uh, coming out on the scope. So what I actually did here uh, before we started was uh, I connected up the uh, signal generator directly into the, the scope and I took a copy of the, uh, the waveform as it was coming in and that's the reference waveform and that's the, the grey channel that uh, uh, you see there. And so the actual uh, signal that's coming in now is on the yellow channel still on one and so you can see there's a little bit of a, a shift in there, but basically uh, the signal seems to be good uh, coming out of there. So I should be getting uh, a good signal coming out uh, uh, on the amplifier here. So now the next thing that I want to do is actually measure uh, the signal coming out from the amplifier into here, coming back into the RF uh, part of the unit which is uh, further in. So let me uh, uh, shut the unit down and uh, re-cable for that. Okay so now I have um, the signal generator uh, connected up to the hard line that goes into the system and that uh, line goes in and becomes a, a bit of coax that uh, and if we undo my mount here we can will be able to see it uh, that goes up to uh, uh, the back here and it's uh, this guy here and it goes into the A16 RF uh, detector uh, uh, assembly and so what uh, I've done now is I've just fed the same signal in through that line over to my uh, scope here let's see if I can get over to the scope we zoom in a bit you know and so what you can see if I turn the thing off as you can see this was the original signal that was the direct pass through from the signal generator and now if I run that through um, you can see that the line from the, the front to the RF assembly uh, also seems good so in terms of the uh, the attenuation, because uh, when I measured um, when I measured the uh, um, let's zoom back out here so you can see this when I measured the uh, the RF amp and this is the RF amp uh, here that's sitting upside down uh, this is the U1 uh, amplifier when I measured this uh, it was right at the lower end of its uh, scale in terms of um, 
<coughs> the amplification that are put through. So what we've just done is we've just tested to see that uh, um, the signal coming into the amp is good. The signal coming out of the amp is not attenuated. So it is, must be the amp itself that uh, is on the low end of its uh, its value. I have the uh, uh, the system back together again, and uh, I'm feeding in uh, power to the from the signal generator into the front, and then I'm picking it up again out of here, and then I'm taking it over to my um, uh, oscilloscope. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to run through the front end checks again. And what I had uh, discovered the first time I ran through was that was uh, very close to, uh, or if not just below the minimum. So let's work through uh, these checks. I have um, uh, the signal generator set to 11 megs. Uh, I have uh, it set to give me uh, four divisions peak to peak. I'm connected uh, here correctly. All right, so let's press instrument preset, automatic. And then set, come back and set my uh, oscilloscope back down. Okay. So let's, let me go now and uh, get a, a, an image of the oscilloscope. Alright, so there we are, and as you can see, uh, let me see, let me zoom in just a little bit more, see if we can get nice in there. Um, you can see that uh, I'm down here, and then one, two, three, four uh, divisions up, uh, and you can see a bit of dust on the, the screen. Let me see if I can let's grab a Kim wipe and see if that makes it better. Yeah. Okay, um, for a little bit and then the static electricity sucks it back in. Anyway, okay, so now the first thing it says for me to do is to start going through and so um, if I type special function 1.1, 1 .1, uh, you sh I should be four peaks, which I am. Uh, let me snapshot that. Okay, then if I go 1.2 special, I should be now down to between 1.2 and 1.4. So let's just bring this down a little bit. Okay, and then bring it across. And so I am. just between about 1.3 uh, divisions there so let's snapshot that now uh, it says that I go and type in uh, special function 1.7 and then decrease my and let's zoom out a little bit you'll see I need to decrease um, uh, the oscilloscope vertical gain by 10. So instead of 5 millivolts, let me take it out to 50 millivolts. And now let me go and put that on the zero and put that in. Okay, so now it should be between 5.7 and 7. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, almost 6. Uh, divisions there. So let's snapshot that and now do 1.8 and special. Okay and now that I can pretty much leave that exactly where it is and that should be between 1.8 and 2.2 and you can see it's you know, about 1.9. So U1 was real low earlier and now it seems to be just inside um, uh, just inside the uh, uh, the minimum spec, so I'm going to have to keep uh, looking around uh, for my faults. I think uh, I might try running this through the uh, tuned RF um, uh, 
performance test again to see if it uh, actually works. Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep uh, poking around. I hope you found this uh, interesting, and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.